Hello, today is Friday, March 4th. As the market opens here, we are down about 1% and the VIX is at 33. So it's a very high level of implied volatility. There's a lot of uncertainty around the geopolitical issues, but also obviously uh, we have the uh, interest rate, you know, monetary side of things as well. So a lot of uncertainty in previous videos here, we've talked about how that is driving uh, negative gamma. Basically it's put positions that are dominating the way that the market is shifting around right now. And in that context, we wanted to talk about the problem with trying to buy call options here. Maybe you're a bull and you think, look, all this is going to get resolved and that's going to lead to a pretty strong rally. And so we wanted to discuss what is the problem with trying to buy calls here and what's kind of the catch. Now on your screen, what we have here is the implied volatility on a closing basis of spiders. So this chart only shows options that have a 30 delta. And this is going back to October of last year. And each of these colors, as you can see here, represents a different days to expiration. So blue is a shorter days to expiration, that's five. And then we go up to 30 in this chart. Now what you wanna note here is that the blue circles are above the yellow circles. So what that's telling us is short dated options have a higher implied volatility than longer dated options. Many of you may understand this to be backwardation. This is what happens when the markets are in crash mode, right? Short dated options, demand for short dated options spikes and that drives the cost or the implied volatility of those options over longer dated options. If you look at times of relative calm, such as here at in January, at the start of January, the yellow options that are longer dated options have a higher implied volatility. This is called contango than the shorter dated options. And that's the normal way that the market is usually positioned in, in spiders. So because we have this, again, uh, short dated implied volatility over the longer dated implied volatility, we're in a backward dated high volatility state and this is why buying calls here is a little bit tricky. Now, before we move on to the next slide, which really lays this out, we wanna point out two things. You'll note there's something of a lower bound here in, in implied volatility. And implied volatility is just an estimate of how much the market is going to move essentially, right? When you look at this chart, you'll note something here. Uh, one, it's interesting to us, just anecdotally, that this is the high off the January OPEX. We discussed this OPEX at length. This is again a closing basis so we still have not breached even though the geopolitical tensions have arguably escalated we still have not breached this january high which we think is pretty interesting uh, i believe on an intraday basis we have but still not on a closing basis so um, volatility has been somewhat contained even though it is elevated again the vix is at 33 this morning there is something called the rule of 16 which allows you to translate implied volatility into a daily move so if you divide the vix 33 uh, which is the current level by 16, you come up with about 2%. So the market is pricing in a 2% daily move right now from the S&P options perspective. You also may notice on this chart that there is a lower bound to volatility, right? And if you think about the VIX, you know, there's been some times in recent years where the VIX is pressured down around the 10 area, but typically, you know, 12, 13 has been the lower bound in the past. And that is because the market's going to move at least, you know, 20, 30, 40 basis points a day, right? So people are not going to, as volatility comes down, you know, there, there's only so far down that can go. And so when you think about buying and selling options and, and often, you know, implied volatility is like a price, right? You wanna buy options typically when volatility is low and you expect volatility to increase. And that goes for calls as well as puts. If you own an option and, and the implied volatility comes down, generally that's going to be a drag on your position. And we're gonna talk about that right now. So again, the key concept we wanted to talk about is what is the issue with buying calls? Again, maybe you think that the current issues, monetary and geopolitical, are going to be resolved or QE is going to come out and we're going to get a big rally. Whatever it may be, if you think the market is going to rally here, you may think, hey, it's a good time to buy calls. But because implied volatility is so high, that can create a real drag on your call position. And the result of that is that the call payoff may not be quite as good as you'd expect. So what we've done here is we've plotted a single call option and done some estimates on what happens if you move time and volatility around. So in blue is basically what this 4,500 call is worth today. You can see with the S&P somewhere near 4,350, it has an implied volatility of 21 with about 40 days of expiration. So if you wanted to buy a call that has the Fed kind of baked into it, as well as some time to have geopolitical uh, issues resolved, okay, 40 days of expiration is a reasonable amount of time duration on that call, right? So what you'll note here is that it has a 21 implied volatility. And if we shift that implied volatility around, right, we do nothing else, what happens is the value of your call drops substantially. 
Now, again, as we all know, as the market rallies, implied volatility is supposed to come down. But what you can see, again, all else equal, implied volatility coming down is really going to hurt that call position. Remember, as we said, if you're long options, you want the implied volatility of those options to increase. That, that increases the value of your call or put. Now, in this case, the value of that call is going to come down as implied volatility drops. So you're going to make some money as the market rallies, but as implied volatility drops, that's going to hurt your position. Now, remember where we are right now, right? The VIX is at 33. We are at a real high. So the odds are that implied volatility will drop rather substantially. Now, the other thing that we would note, obviously, you have this implied volatility drag. You don't know when the geopolitical situation is going to resolve. We've written a lot about how we think much of the uncertainty and the demand for puts is driven by the, by the fact that monetary policy uh, is not particularly clear at the moment. People are rather unsure around the path of rate hikes, quantitative easing, et cetera. And so a lot of that should be cleaned up on March 16th, right? We'll get a better uh, and more clear understanding of what central banks are going to do. So if we were just to say, okay, look, let's hold implied volatility there at 21. Uh, there's not going to be a drop in implied volatility because people are going to hold that put protection, right? And, and keep implied volatility up, but we just pass time. So in other words, we go from 40 days of expiration down to 30, you know, that FOMC meeting is about uh, two weeks away. So that's all we've done here is we shifted time for the green line. And you can see that that decay is obviously also a drag on your portfolio. So if you are like us and believe that, look, the market probably hits 4,400 to 4,500 resistance. And then, you know, it's just going to be a grind until the until we have clarity around monetary policy, well, you're just going to pay a rather high theta tax in that case. So again, the issue with buying calls here, it's a very strong bet to say implied volatility would drop with market rallies. And number two, if you are in, if you are like us in believing that you know the a real substantial rally cannot be sparked until we have clarity uh, from the Fed, well, you're paying something of a double toll in that case. And that is what the issue is with, with buying long calls in this position. Now, short put is an interesting method to get long the market, but not too many people want to be short volatility or short puts here because of the geopolitical tail risk, right? You just don't know what could happen over the weekend. I mean, anything is on the table. Uh, long stock could be an interesting way to play. And there's obviously a bunch of different ways that you could uh, structure spreads to help offset the cost of that volatility decline. So there are a bunch of different ways you can structure trades around this to try to mitigate uh, declining applied volatility if you own calls. But we just wanted to pass along this sort of base concept and highlight why there may be a deterrent here for a lot of people to want to uh, put on those call positions. If you have any questions on this, please put them in the comment section below or hit us up at SpotGamma on Twitter or info at SpotGamma.com.